Now, this development has the world on edge because couple that with the fact that there have been numerous warnings since the start of this war in the last 36 days from Vladimir Putin, from some of his top aides, warning that if they face an existential crisis, if there's a third world war, they will use their nuclear weapons. And Russia has a very dangerous nuclear arsenal as well. That's why the world is extremely concerned with what's playing out. Unending invasion war, weeks of savage battle, countless deaths, cities in complete ruin. But no massive win to show on the ground for Russian President Vladimir Putin. Amidst the fierce fight back by Ukraine and biting Western sanctions, Ominous signs for the world have emerged. Putin has resorted to the Brahmastra in his arsenal. The massive Russian stockpile of nuclear weapons. Openly threatening a no-holds-barred nuclear war. Refusing to rule out the use of nuclear weapons if there is an existential threat to Russia. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov had earlier warned that any Third World War would be nuclear and destructive. A threat repeated by the Kremlin with chilling resonance. The outcome of the operation, uh, of course, is not a reason for usage of a nuclear weapon. We have a security concept that very clearly states that only uh, when, when there is a threat for existence of, of the state in our country, we can uh, use and we will actually use nuclear weapons to eliminate the threat for the existence of our country. Let me assure you, a responsible member of the international community committed to its obligations to non-profilation of weapons of mass destruction. Russia is taking every possible measure to prevent Ukraine from getting nuclear weapons and respective technologies. The nuclear saber rattling is one of many that Russia has openly indulged in. Just days into the Ukraine invasion, Vladimir Putin had put nuclear deterrent forces on high alert as a chilling warning to NATO and the West. Dear colleagues, as you can see, not only Western countries take unfriendly measures against our country. In the economic dimension, I mean the illegal sanctions that everyone knows about very well. But the top officials of leading NATO countries allow themselves to make aggressive statements with regard to our country. That is why I ordered Defence Minister and Chief of General Staff to put Russian Army deterrence forces on high alert. It has now emerged that Russia had even dispatched its nuclear ballistic missile submarines into the North Atlantic as the war raged in Ukraine. After their deterrent patrol, the submarines were quietly pulled back by the Kremlin. The West fears that Russia, suffering massive reverses in Ukraine's war theater, could resort to using tactical nuclear weapons, which are of a small yield but can devastate an entire city. In a bid to escalate the war and force Ukraine to agree to its terms on the negotiations table. Allies agreed to supply equipment uh, to help Ukraine protect against uh, chemical, biological, radiological and nuclear threats. Uh, this could include um, uh, detection uh, equipment, uh, protection and medical support, as well as training uh, for the uh, contamination and crisis management. We are also enhancing allies' uh, preparedness and readiness for chemical and biological and nuclear threats. A calculated nuclear gambit or plain brinkmanship to turn the tide in a war that has simply not gone Russia's way as expected. Whatever it may be, the Ukraine war triggering nuclear moves comes as a massive alarm bell for the entire world.
India today's Geeta Mohan and Gaurav Savant have been venturing into different parts of Ukraine where no other channel has been to get you a sense of what's really playing out on the ground. Let's get you this series of exclusive ground reports by Geeta Mohan from Gorlovka. She was in Mariupol yesterday. She's traveled into Donetsk where again this massive fighting, massive shelling that's being reported. Here are those world exclusives. A city in ruins, out of food, out of water, out of electricity. India today is in Gorlovka, a city near Donetsk Oblast in eastern Ukraine. The war trail has taken us from Donetsk to Mariupol to Gorlovka. India today is the world's first television crew to reach deep inside the Russian-controlled territories of Ukraine. The after effects of massive shelling here in Gorlovka. Shards of glasses now being removed by the residents. They're not leaving the city that has come under heavy shelling from the Ukrainian side. Uh, the windows broken and now this lady over here this old lady over here is cleaning, tending to her garden. She's cleaning the glass, shards of glass. And what she says is that her flowers and her garden has been destroyed. A home, a garden that she maintains with much love. Now absolutely destroyed. And so she's trying to retrieve whatever she can of the the, the garden that is left because they've just sown the seeds for the next season and before the flowers can bloom before the saplings can even be visible there are glasses everywhere shards of glass everywhere um, very sad sight and you'll see this in the entire neighborhood here in most parts of Gorlovka that has come under heavy shelling non-stop bombing might have destroyed much of the concrete but the city's soul is intact. Elena Vladimir, residing in Gorlovka for years, says she will rebuild her home. Все вычистили, цветов насажали, ничего, вычистим, еще лучше насадим. So uh, this woman says that in 15 uh, there was shelling here, uh, they bombed everything. But they build, rebuild it again. So they put the flowers here and make this territory pretty. And now again, the shelling and everything destroyed. But she says, oh, it's not, not bad. We will just repair it again. Uh, Hindi films, they Bollywood also is giving Elena good company and keeping her spirit high even in these times of war. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Ася, Ася, Индия, Радж Капур, люблю, не могу, всю жизнь люблю индийские фильмы. У меня столько дисков, Боби есть, у меня, у меня много, 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 да, 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 Рам Шиам, Зита Гита. Свет бывает, тоже как бы, если сильная стрелка. This is Olha's house. She does not want to show her face because she has relatives in Ukraine as well. So it could be a security issue for her family members on the other side. But she's here. This is her house, which was destroyed. You're seeing new bricks because they're rebuilding. That's how resilient this town has been of Golvoka because they've been suffering this for a while. Uh, Ola over here will explain what happened. Ola, what happened to your house? Пятнадцатого июня две тысячи пятнадцатого года производился обстрел. Было два прилета именно поэтому по улице Шашурина, дом пятнадцать. И был прилет в первый этаж фундамент этого дома, и рядом стояк, четвертый этаж просто насквозь. Uh, was hit this uh, house and her flat was ruined. Door was out and um, it was impossible to live here after that shell. Right. Uh, impossible to live out here. This is the house that is being rebuilt and just if Satya goes to the window, 
Beyond this point is where the Ukrainians are holding forth. So the, every time there is attack or, uh, or uh, 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 a fierce battle between the Ukrainian side and the Donetsk or the Russian side, this, this town of Golwaka is the first victim, first town to fall victim. And this, this, this building, this neighborhood is the one that suffers the most. Uh, I'll take you outside to show exactly how the situation is outside also. If you come out over here, the buildings are absolutely uh, dilapidated because uh, they have been suffering this kind of shelling since 2014. Uh, and while the people still continue to live, Right now, because the situation is so bad, the neighborhood is almost empty. There are older people, some younger lot who are still here, but playground over there, absolutely abandoned. Children uh, do not come out. Some of them do come out if they're here uh, and play amid the sounds of explosions of shelling. So these are unreal times for people of Golwaka, but also uh, 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 an entire community over here that has been witnessing the fiercest battle between Ukraine and Russia, between Ukraine and Donbas. Work Notoritsky is where Russian control ends. One kilometer from here, Ukrainians are holding fort. This is Verkhnitryaska, where the Russians have taken control. This was Ukrainian territory, but now this has come under Russian control. The village over there absolutely destroyed because of the continuous shelling from both sides. Villagers have fled. Some of them continue to stay here, uh, but most of them have fled. That's, that's continuous shelling going on. And uh, where, where we are right now is where the injured are being brought uh, to the Russian camp, camouflaged nets. Uh, you can see that to ensure that... Uh, that this uh, this this uh, house this little house that they've taken up is not destroyed now we're going in to show you exactly what their medics uh, their military medics med medical team of the russian military force and uh, they have an emergency uh, operation or a, or a, or a, or a operation theater where uh, they are performing whatever rudimentary surgeries or uh, procedures that can be performed. This is also the first aid center where first aid is provided to those who are injured in the attacks. Uh, and the ones who really require major medical help are taken uh, by, by the medical vans to Gorlovka. Alex, if I could uh, speak to uh, the officers here as to what the situation is and when did they take control of uh, this, uh, this village? Окончательный контроль над этим поселком я не могу вам ответить. Мы сюда зашли четыре дня назад. Именно медицина. Естественно, вы понимаете, что медики заходят тогда, когда фронт продлевается хотя бы на шесть километров вперед. So they got here four days ago, and this is the medical group. So they standing behind the forward forces. The post. Just behind the post is where they are. Uh, how many injured uh, approximately have they uh, taken out and uh, evacuated from here? Отсюда, ну, в полном счет я вам за эти дни не могу сказать, но сегодня, буквально сегодня у нас было около девяти раненых и двое убитых. It was nine injured and two killed today here. Nine injured, two killed only today, but this is an operation that is ongoing and continuing. So we will bring you all the reports from the forward posts over here, but this is the last position, the latest one that the Russian forces have taken control of. This was under Ukrainian uh, uh, control. Now uh, the Russians have taken control of this area, and it seems like the villages over there uh, are absolutely destroyed, but people not willing to leave. As Russian forces press ahead, it is meeting resistance from the Ukrainians. The theater of war has shifted from Kyiv to eastern Ukraine. This is the last 
post where the Russians now have taken control. This was on the Ukrainian side, Varkva Trayanka, where uh, the Ukrainians had control. Now it is absolutely under Russian control. The village absolutely destroyed. We're being told there are only 30 civilians who are still there over here. Most of them old who do not want to leave, but only 30. The rest have fled to safety either on that side or this side. Shelling ongoing from both sides, trying to regain control when it comes to the Ukrainian side, trying to keep control when it comes to the Russian side. Mortar shelling uh, visible uh, in all houses that are absolutely destroyed. Uh, there was a mortar shell that fell on this house as well, where we are standing right now. But it seems like this is going to continue because this is the last position for the Russian side, a critical one at that. In areas where Russian forces have taken control, it has confiscated machine guns and ammunition from the defeated Ukrainians. This is one of the homes uh, where the Ukrainian forces had placed their machine gun. You can see the remnants, the pellets over here, uh, and uh, the action here on the door. So there are a few homes over here which were being used by the Ukrainian forces to uh, to base themselves out of and and the action uh, against Russian forces were being carried out from these very places. So some of the homes over here ha had a huge stash of ammo and that uh, ammunition has been confiscated by the Russian side uh, while the Ukrainian forces withdrew and went back to the positions that they're in now. A lot has been said about the Ukrainian love for their motherland and their resolve. The same holds true for the Russian troops. India today met a soldier couple in the war zone. They have left their five-year-old baby at home to fight what many are calling Vladimir Putin's war. On the front lines, fighting with the forces to take as much territory as they can. They're ensuring a DPR Russia win. And we'll have to wait and see how the Ukrainians react. There are young couples, young forces, young women fighting the forces on the other side as well. But this is a young couple fighting from this side. Tanks moving to the front line over here. We've seen this continuous action, continuous movement of tanks that have been moving from Gorlovka and other areas up to the front line. This village now has been taken and is under Russian control. Those are Russian military personnel and forces who are now moving to the front uh, as and when they require more ammunition, more, more backup, more support. You'd see this road being used to go up to the front. Russia is sending reinforcements, including T-64 tanks, to the region. Moscow is determined to hold on to their hand-won gains in the last few days. We are right uh, at, the, at the border areas. Now the uh, forces over here, Russian forces preparing to go to the front. You can see that they are arming uh, the tanks with the ammunition, the weapons that are required. And uh, over there, there are three more, two more uh, the tanks. This is a T-64 and they are readying themselves. They soon will be going to the front. You see all of them. They were taking a break and now uh, the forces over here moving ahead. There you can see they're all going. Uh, they're, they're all going to the front line. This is uh, an area in Golvanaka. We are again being told not to disclose location so can't show the buildings around. Uh, Satya is keeping it very specific to the tanks that are here and will be in motion very soon. Uh, they are going to go uh, to the villages that have been captured where we were reporting from. The commander who's commanding this uh, convoy of tanks, Sergeant Ilya. Sergeant Ilya, thank you for speaking with India today and Archtak. Uh, where are you headed? We see you're preparing. Where are you headed right now? Don't want details, but uh, just uh, just about the fact that the the border areas that they're trying to capture. Не не нужны детали, но скажите, куда вы направляетесь? То есть какие у вас примерно задачи стоят? То, что можно сказать. Задачи стоят на Бахмутовку отбить сейчас, как бы вернуть ее нам то, что нам положено и нашу территорию. 
So they are going to Novomakhmutovka village, which is in the territory of Donetsk People's Republic. It must be so. So they are gathering to take it back now. What are the challenges that they are facing as forces? Are there any challenges that they are facing? What uh, problems you are facing as a division? The problems from the Ukraine? Ну вообще, то есть как какие у вас Operational challenges. Да, технические какие трудности, то есть как это Технические трудности, да, в принципе никаких, только машинки старые уже уставшие, приходится их самим заниматься, их там подкручивать, там всякие патрубки, ну, со временем уже стали протираться и так далее, то есть. So the, the only problem they meet is the old uh, technique and uh, they need to repair it uh, seldom. Because these are the T-64s and not the T-90s, which are the latest tanks of uh, the Russian forces. Да, это только это Т-64, не не Т-90, которые. Конечно, это Т-64, которым лет уже лет 50 точно. So at least these tanks are 50 years old. They're 50 years old, but why do you think Russia thinks it's okay for a T-64 to fight Ukrainians? Do you think uh, they do not require more power to fight the Ukrainians? Is this enough? Вопрос такой, хватает ли Т-64 для украинцев, то есть может нужна техника лучше или достаточно этой? Ну, пока мы справляемся с этой, у нас есть 64-ки, 72-ки, у нас в принципе вот в батальоне 40 танков, поэтому мы потихоньку ну, справляемся с этой проблемой. So they have t t 72 T-72 and T-64, so this is enough for them, as he says. That's Sergeant Ilya saying that it's enough for them. They're going to go to the front line and ensure that the areas that are a part of Donetsk remain with Donetsk and the Russian forces over here are going to ensure that they maintain control of the region and of the area. I'm atop a T-64 Russian tank and they are now preparing to roll in to the border areas, the front line. The preparation is on. The, the, uh, the weapons are being placed, ammunition being placed inside the tank. Uh, they were taking a break, but now they're preparing themselves to go to where we're coming from. The last village that now is under Russian control. Ukrainian forces have been pushed back and they require all the support, all the backup that's required. And therefore, these tanks soon are going to go rolling into those villages atop a T-64. With the journalist Satya Rautre, Geeta Mohan for India Today. Now, in the course of this war, both sides have suffered a lot of damages. We're talking about resources, military equipment, manpower as well. Geeta Mohan, while traveling through Gorlovka, also found that there were many Russian tanks destroyed by the Ukrainian side lying on the roads. The Russian army and troops are now focusing on repairing this so they can be used in the conflict at the earliest. Amid massive shelling and bombardments over here, we found this tank, a Russian tank uh, that was hit by the Ukrainian side. We are in one of the undisclosed locations where these tanks are being brought in. They will be repaired, is what officials and officers over here are saying, uh, and then sent back to the front. So, a massive damage being caused by both sides, the Ukrainian forces as also the Russian side, when it comes to the war that is underway between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, one such tank over here, but there are many uh, that come uh, for repair over here, and then once repaired, they send back to the front line. With video journalist Satya Rautre on the way to Gorlovka, Geeta Mohan for India Today. There's intense fighting that's happening where Gita is, in Gorlovka. In eastern Ukraine right now, Ukraine as well as Russia is fighting it out to take full control of the rebel region. Gita Mohan had a conversation with a local navigator who explains how things are poised in this area right now. The last neighborhood in Gorlovka. A kilometer away is where the Ukrainian forces are. Sasha, our military contact, is going to explain. Sasha, tell us where do the Ukrainians stand? Ukrainian flag up, now Ukrainian flag down. Okay. That hill? That hill, Ukraine. Okay. That hill that you see? If Satya can zoom in, that's, that's the hill. So this, this entire neighborhood and Golvoka is 
in their line of sight, in the line of sight of the Ukrainian forces. And uh, both sides are having a fierce fight. In many parts, you can hear explosions in many parts, but this neighborhood has suffered the most. All the buildings over here uh, with shattered windows and uh, only a few people remain, but they still live here. They still remain here because this is a stronghold, uh, has not been breached by the Ukrainian side uh, since 2014-2015. And uh, that's the reason why they still feel that they're safe to stay here. How safe, how protected uh, we, we, we know that they, they have two layers of windows everywhere. So if at all there's shelling, then um, one, one window breaks and the other, the one inside, does not. So they know when to leave their homes for safety or to safety. Vidhuti journalist Satya Rautri in Golvoka, Geeta Mohan for India Today. Next, let's get you a conversation that Geeta had with a couple, a soldier couple who are fighting the front lines for Russia. And they've said very clearly they're not moving away from the conflict zone until they ensure that there's a victory for Russia. The forward posts and tanks rolling in and out of this entire area. You can see them. They, we saw them earlier as well, but now the Russians have taken complete control of this region, of this area, and it seems like they are not going to move back anytime soon. A soldier on the front line, he was here when this village was taken. Please ask him, um, uh, how was this entire, what was the situation over here when they came in and how did they take control? Какая была ситуация, когда вы заходили, и как мы получили контроль над этим поселением? Заходили тяжело, заходили наши бойцы с боем, постепенно выталивая украинских военных с позиций. Они занимали позиции не только в укреп районах, но и в таких живых домах. Вот мы наблюдали непосредственно вот здесь вот пулеметное гнездо было. Они занимали крупные моменты такие инфраструктуры, как школы, детские сады, устраивали прям там укреп районы. Они, в принципе, ведут бой таким образом, как террористическая группировка. Они прикрываются местными жителями, объектами инфраструктуры. Ну, у этих людей нет ничего святого. То есть даже медицинский транспорт, который выезжал с позиции, вывозя раненых, подвигался обстрелу со стороны украинских военнослужащих. Поэтому передвигаться на позицию вам, как журналистам, не есть безопасно. Они не призываются. Uh, was holding here on the positions uh, which were built by them. Also, they used uh, um, f um, uh, flats of local people, uh, their houses, oh, yes. their houses for their positions. Uh, he said they using uh, tactics of like terrorist tactics. So they also shooting uh, first. Um, their targets is medical. Uh, uh, Vehicles, medical. medical vehicles, which moving, or, or medics. Uh, here they was, uh, they were getting here hard way, uh, street by street. They were taking Ukrainians tried to uh, try to take some territory back, but uh, the, now the territory is under our control. Also, he said uh, they used uh, schools and killed kindergartens as their bases. Okay, and uh, you're saying that the Ukrainians, that they took each place street by street. What was the, uh, how, the, the force deployment over here? How many Ukrainian personnel were here when they, when, when they were taking the, the village? Uh, по вашему мнению, сколько здесь было, какая группировка здесь находилась украинцев, когда вы заходили? Здесь стояла 25-я отдельная аэромобильная бригада ВДВ, город Днепропетровск, плюс укрепленный обычными ВСУшниками и нас батальоном. Но это то, что известно мне. Ну, естественно, на других подразделениях есть больше информации. So, he knows the name of, of uh, the groups which were acting here from Ukrainian side. It was 25th uh, recon group uh, of Dnipropetrovsk in Ukraine Air Forces and um, national national guard and also some other groups were here so how many of them we cannot say now okay. thank you so much thank you
This is Olena. Dennis, the soldier we were interviewing, is uh, her husband. She's 32 years old. She was 27 when she when she joined the uh, the army from Gorlovka. You have a child. This, the, the Show. Girl. 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 Name. Sophia. Sophia. A child. With whom? Mama. У мамы сейчас, yeah? да, у бабушки. Ah, so she's with the grandmother. Her father's no more, so she's with the grandmother. A young child, Sophia, and the couple fighting. Five-year-old, five-year-old child. And the father, mother are fighting here in the front. That's the father over there. Yes. That's the Dennis. Can we show Kersatya? That's Dennis. This is Olena. And they're a couple fighting the war together. Yes. So, uh, we've, Engineer, we've heard... Minus, yes. Okay, he's more interested in talking about this, uh, about the, uh, the, the rocket fire that took place half a time ago. But this is a couple on the front lines fighting with the forces to take as much territory as they can. They're ensuring a DPR Russia win. And we'll have to wait and see how the Ukrainians react. There are young couples, young forces, young women fighting the forces on the other side as well. But this is a young couple fighting from this side. With Vidhi Chirala Satya Rautre, Geeta Mohan for India Today.